Good afternoon. We are continuing our series on the presidents of the Republican women of Northern County, the Northern region, I should say. And we have Gail Thies with us, who is Hopkins Women's Republican Club president. What brought you into the club, Gail? Believe it or not, it was my late mother who had been a member uh, when she had just moved to town uh, from New York, which was an extreme experience for her because it was a minority party. But she worked her, uh, her volunteer hours as a uh, committee woman over there and uh, educated me as to the power of civic leadership because there were problems uh, locally that nobody paid attention in the media, but the club seemed to address local issues by inviting experts on whatever problem there was. And I saw results as a younger person in the community because of the leadership of local talent, so to speak. And it was very inspirational, so it stuck with me. How old were you when your mom brought you to the club? Uh, I started out at eight years old. I was drafted as a volunteer for local candidates. Uh, I, I feel we were responsible for electing John Lindsay, mayor of New York. We, we really gave out a lot of literature, and I was basically full of energy. I wanted to get away from my homework, and uh, it was a great way to do it. And, and it was fun because I got to meet all these people. In New York, people hide behind their doors, but we got to know all the neighbors, and it was inspirational. Well, your point is so important because one of the things I say is that we have to start at a young age teaching our children. We should have them at the dinner table and have specific questions we want to ask them. What is the Constitution? What does it mean to be in freedom? Let them talk back. Let them exchange, which I know that's important to you. And we can't let the schools tell them, obviously, because they're not telling them conservative views. So I think every mother and father in this club, that should be something that they're all doing, teaching children around the dinner table. What impassions you to continue with the club for so many years? I see it as a beacon of truth because the media is so biased. Uh, there are a lot of congressional things going on that we never hear about. When Republicans testify, uh, they're suddenly not covered, and the Democrats get all the, uh, it seems that they get all the coverage they need for whatever issue they propose, but Republicans are shut out a lot, and you have to read uh, in the tiny parts of the newspaper, almost like uh, uh, a Soviet publication at this point, you know, the way the media is covering Republicans. And I resent the fact that we're not getting the full picture and the, the younger set is not getting the full picture because you turn on the TV and it's treated like gospel. But as a former reference librarian, you've got to go beyond the truth and know your sources. And I want the people in our club to know the truth. If we can provide backup sources from people on the inside who are members of our club, that's an excellent place to find out what I call uh, civic and political truth. And I know that you've had some great speakers. I think Nicole Bennett was one of the speakers who did the Project 300, which has to do with getting more election judges. Who are some of the other speakers? And what are some of the other ways that you're learning in your club? Because what I find about your club that's fascinating is that it's, it's intimate and that you're able to really discuss important and deep ideas. Well, due to the nature of the name, after Johns Hopkins, the man, um, he believed in, you know, freedom of thought, especially founding the university that was very liberal for its time. Liberal in the intellectual sense, please, not political. But anyway, they have Eisenhower Library, for example, so that says something. But anyway, um, uh, the, the club essentially follows a French salon mode. I think of it like a college colloquium where you have debate and discussion. It's not a huge club, but that, that allows people to really air their, their events uh, they're venting feelings, you know, uh, and not just that, but thought as well. And they can debate among each other. I'm sort of like the buffer. I carry a, uh, uh, a gavel made of uh, pencil erasers, <laughs> and that way they, they suddenly be quiet. They're quiet when they hear the quiet gavel go down. But we have a lot of interchange and uh, debate going on with people, and, and sometimes it gets a little carried away, and you've got to temper that, and that's the challenge we face. And you've, you've seen that. Well, that's okay, because I think that's what being a Republican woman is all about, being able to discuss both sides, and that's the problem with our society today. We don't have areas like that, and that's the beauty of your club, that someone could actually go there, feel safe, in order to find a way to um, 
create their own ideas and how to deliver that to other people. What strengths do you think certain women need to be in the club? What do you see, what are some other things that you see people are joining the club for? They're joining the club um, almost for the simple reason known as fellowship, uh, a place where somebody can actually not feel afraid to express a viewpoint that's not, you know, the majority viewpoint when it's a bad majority viewpoint. Um, they're able to uh, interact with what I'm going to call local talent when they really can't, you know, essentially do that. We had, for example, Alan Walden as one of our speakers when he ran for uh, office, and he was very, very intent on promoting Baltimore, not just for political reasons, but for getting people to settle here. And uh, he was also very involved in promoting the port, and uh, with all due respect to Helen Bentley, but the thing was that, that he, he was a very powerful radio force for many, many years, and, and people knew the name, but I don't think they knew he was a Republican uh, philosophy. That was the strange thing. And we also had Alexander Levine, who was very involved with uh, the faith movement in the, pump, uh, the Trump uh, uh, campaign. And uh, she brought us some enlightening news about the inner workings of that uh, uh, campaign effort within the campaign on a faith issue basis. I'm going to close with this with you because there's a word that you actually mentioned earlier, or you've talked to me about it, mm -hmm. injustice. How do you feel that you are fighting injustice by being a member and the president of the club? Um, the word Republican means uh, of the Commonwealth or in the interest of the people, okay? The Democrats think they're doing that, but I think that we have to enlighten people as to what it really means to be a Republican. And also in the universal sense, uh, come to us when you have fear of the eminent uh, uh, process of eliminating freedom, okay? And I think we stand as a beacon for freedom, uh, especially freedom of thought, okay? And a lot of people have uh, government jobs and they're, they feel like they're the lone wolves out there and they're not allowed to express themselves because for fear of being uh, know, not tolerated. And uh, when they retire, they can come to us <laughs> for, for a few ex expression. Well, that's great. It sounds like a wonderful club. I might try that meeting myself, actually. <laughs> So thank you so much for all you do as the president. I know everyone works tirelessly in this position. And um, God bless you, and God bless America.